Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, today it was uh, Jordi, the person who should uh, present this talk, but I guess he is having some problems with the connection. Then uh, I think that now is the time. Then I will I will introduce uh, Simone. I would like to start. Thank you all of you for coming today to this uh, talk. Uh, today, today, Simone Lepe. She's a product manager in advanced microscopy at Nikon. And then uh, she is going to, to, to present a very nice talk about the a very advanced um, module for analysis from Nikon. It's a inter artificial intelligence. And today she will explain um, the main uh, features and what can we do with, uh, with, with that. Then uh, Simone, thank you for joining us. Um, you can start. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thanks for the kind introduction. Thanks everyone for joining. I see now as well Jordi. So welcome Jordi, <laughs> because actually um, I will give an overview of the possibilities you have in our software, and then we hopefully can have a live presentation of one of the modules. But let's start with the um, presentation. I will share my screen. You see my screen? Can somebody confirm it? We can share it. Yeah. <laughs> because yesterday I had some problems, so I wanted to double check. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, basically, um, we introduced um, five um, modules in our software, which are based on artificial intelligence, and um, they are all um, having a little, covering a little bit different um, sides of this um, of the problems you can have uh, when you're doing microscopy. Um, and uh, two of them are pre-trained by us, and three of them are taken together in one suite, which is called NISAI, which um, you have to train yourself. And I will explain a little bit why we decided um, for this like this. Um, the names given to them, they should already a little bit explain what they do. So denoise AI will remove noise, clarify AI will mainly remove um, out of focus blur and white field images, um, and as these are mainly depending on your hardware, these two problems which can occur, these are the pre-trained algorithms. And the algorithms which are behind NISAI, they are mainly um, for image um, restoration and segmentation, and I will go into more detail of them. But the general principle, no matter if it's pre-trained or um, you have to train it, is always the same. So from a number of images, which uh, you identified your structure you're interested in or what you want to convert um, or we identified the noise or we identified the out of blur out of out of focus blur um, a network is trained and then this trained uh, neural network can be used over and over again so as you can imagine selection of the data um, which you'd use as the ground truth so basically the um, data you train with is uh, very important and so let me first show our results, uh, which uh, we offer to you as one-click solutions, which is the noise AI. And as I said, it removes the noise. Um, so shorter dwell times, basically, and lower laser powers um, for gentle live cell imaging are um, often inducing a significant amount of noise in confocal images. So it comes from the resonance scanner, for example. And uh, with the noise AI, you can either in post-processing or in real time denoise these images to get a clearer view. And um, yeah, I already showed this video yesterday just because I like it so much. So uh, these um, embryos you can see very nicely and much better um, with the denoise AI what's actually happening. Um, the um, noise in confocal imaging is often then the problem in wide field imaging is um, the haze, let's say. And um, we know these challenges, all of us know them, um, scattering light, difficult segmentation. We are not having the optical sectioning we are having with the confocal or spinning disc, but still wide field imaging, especially in live cell imaging, I think um, has a lot of good advantages as well. So clarify, I will enable you um, to actually get uh, rid of this haze. You might argue, yes, I can use deconvolution. Why should I use clarify? I, the beauty of clarify is that you, for example, can as well um, 
use it with low magnification imaging. So then normally Nyquist uh, criteria are not met and uh, your deconvolution will terribly fail, but you can still restore the contrast with Clarify AI for low magnification like here. Um, or if your Z-stacking is actually not um, very fine because you actually don't need it, you can still restore it with Clarify AI, the contrast, and thus see your image. Um, and of course, it as well works on live samples, so especially if you have to image fast. Um, this is a real, very good um, advantage over classical deconvolution algorithms. So with this, um, you might say, with these results, you might say, okay, why do you not give us always directly trained um, uh, networks? And this I will explain a little bit uh, in more detail. So the uh, networks you have to train yourself are called Enhanced AI, Convert AI, and Segment AI. And they all um, treat very classical problems in microscopy, such as having too little photons, um, such as having too few fluorophores, either to mark your structure of interest, or um, you even have a fluorophore which you don't want to have, but you need it because you need to have a marker protein. Um, or simply the problem, the general problem of segmentation. Um, so these three modules are combined in one suite and um, we think they are addressing different questions. So the learning is always the same. Um, you can guess where it comes from. So I put it here, the input value of a cat and the image of the cat. Um, in our case, it can be either a binary or an image, but it's always like what you input is always an image uh, like it's always a pair, an input and an output. And uh, then from this, actually, a model is created which looks for features in the input and in the output and gives a probability to these features and then can make some forecast. So in the example of the cat, uh, maybe furry ears is not enough already to identify a cat, but um, you need more features. But with enough features and their probabilities, these algorithms can very re reliably um, identify cats from the images. And you, we all use this in um, daily life, um, very obvious in search functions, but as well in um, autonomous car driving, for example, all these things are exploited to make, like, f identify very fast um, situations. Um, actually, deep learning is started already in the 50s, um, where people started to invest and get interested in this. Um, but it took quite some while to take off like it's taking off uh, nowadays, or let's say in the last um, 10 years, 10, 15 years maybe. Uh, and one remarkable um, thing for imaging uh, happened in 2012. There is a large competition, um, ILS VRC, so it's an image recognition challenge. And basically there is a database with 150,000 images classified in 1,000 categories. So this is already a tremendous work. Um, but this was done to test um, algorithms how reliably they can identify these images. So here on the left-hand side, you see the error rate. And there's one big gap between 2000, like 2012. The error rate went way down. And this is when deep learning algorithms and started um, to enter this contest. And only three years later, the first algorithm broke what we call human parity. So 5% error rate is the error rate a human normally does. And um, yeah, here then it becomes, of course, very quickly interesting for um, like, let's say critical applications where you would say, yes, um, a few percentage better than a human, maybe, maybe even a drastic change. So I want to present you one thing. Um, it's all very starting, but um, yeah, um, guided uh, decision making could become possible with something like this. So you see here a Nikon upright microscope. We still leave the eyepieces, of course, on there, but here's a little device which in the field of view would suggest you um, if the patient sample, which can lay here behind, there underneath, has a tumor, for example, or not. So you can imagine um, this possibility that opens, um, but you can as well imagine how few patients are actually willing uh, that we remove the eyepieces and that the decision is solely made by an algorithm. So you see there's a lot of psychology as well behind these um, advances, but um, especially if you think when people have um, 
work very long and it's very intense, um, a guidance in their decision might already be a big step forward. Um, as I said, if you want to have a good guidance, um, the data needs to be really so roughly trained. And this is why teaching matters. And this is why we want to leave teaching actually in your hands. Um, I want to explain this on a classical um, example where it failed. I mean, it's nice to identify um, images from cats or from dogs, but of course, at some points you want to know which kind of dog. So this was a, like a further step. And it happened that um, in this uh, process, suddenly a lot of huskies got classified as wolves, which um, was very surprising because you think the husky, you know, these typical eyes and like as well the typical pattern they have in their face for a human, it's very, very easy to recognize. Um, and analysis of this data actually resulted that most people of wolves and huskies had snow in their back. So the um, algorithm took its decision not on the features we take our decision at, but on the snow in the back. And then he classified all animals with has snow in the back, which were mainly huskies, as wolves. Um, so this, of course, was improved. But um, you think, you're, like, I hope this makes the point how important the teaching is and how important the value of your ground truth data is. And um, it's even gone so far that last year, January, in the New York Times, um, it was published that um, there was a facial recognition software, which pro most probably was biased. that was shown in a study from MIT. And there you see how much it already influences our daily life. Um, the ground truth data obviously underrepresented um, people of color, and especially women of color. Now, the thing is that this um, algorithm got sold actually as well to police departments. Now you can judge yourself if you want to be recognized by an algorithm which is used by the police, yes or no. But um, you see it's quite um, important how you select your ground truth data. But don't be scared. <clears throat> we made it easy for you. So when you go to our software, um, in the menu, there is actually then the training part for the algorithms. And in the training part, you just have to select your source channel and your ground truth channel. So basically, um, the two channels, the input and output pair for your training. And we just want to emphasize a little bit, please get good care that you choose here a statistically relevant overview over your sample. And then you can choose the iterations, but the value of 500 or is already quite well. And then you say where you want to have your output saved, and then you can train your algorithm. Um, there's, of course, an add to Q function. The training does take some time, um, depending on, of course, the images. But you directly will see then um, outputted um, the training loss and how it's proceeding. And as I said, so you could start this, for example, at the end of the day, and you could have a few numbers um, which are all added, and then they're batch processed. And then when you come back, um, you have your network, you have your data, and you have the training loss curve. And then this um, network file can be shared um, really, really easily. So they all give you a different um, type of file, um, the train protocols. But these are rather small and easy to share um, yeah, files, which you can then transfer to several stations or to colleagues or whatever you can think of. As well there, make sure that when a sudden new feature appears, maybe over years, um, actually you start to, you, your sample changed, you have to go back to the training. So as well there, if you give somebody to make it easy, an algorithm with identifies cats, um, it should not be used on dogs, right? So this is the only thing you have to keep in mind. So always be aware of what you put it into this algorithm. Now I will explain um, in more detail the um, three the, the, what they are doing. Um, so the first is enhance AI, but you will see this later in a live presentation. But um, just for the understanding, so this would be an image where you would say, ah, I probably have too little. Uh, now you see the line profile as well. Too little um, signal. You see the line profile is very very noisy. Um, you would not like probably to work with an image like this. 
five milliseconds exposure time was maybe very handy for your live cell experiment because it gives very little stress on your cells. If I would ask you to always expose your cells for a second to get a very nice signal to noise ratio because the, I'm the bioinformatician in your institute, you would be not very happy. So Enhanced AI basically creates from the five millisecond image, the one second image, which you then can further use. And if you see them side by side, um, so the blue line in the line profile is the five milliseconds image. It has so little signal that you don't see it at all anymore nearly. And the one millisecond uh, and the one second in the middle does look a little bit different than the um, one which came out of the artificial intelligence. But you see from the line profile with this, you can work very, very well. Convert AI even takes it a step further. Um, so this is a little video where you can see live cells only taken in right field actually. And with convert AI, we can get the information for the nucleus. And this of course is often enough for a lot of uh, control measures you need to do, like how many cells you have, or even for tracking. Um, and then you can even image your sample uh, without any exposure uh, to for, um, yeah, with fluorescent light. So this will be make your cells very happy. And of course, afterwards, you can have a complete analysis workflow. So here in the left, um, you see there was no DAPI taken. I mean, this is a fixed sample, but even without the DAPI channel, as we have the convert AI, we can reach um, the same segmentation we have from the image with the DAPI channel. So it's not really needed. And you could think you just get rid of it. And um, this shows you here the cell count, for example, and now in, in red, what we get from convert AI or you could think um, that you, like the fluorophore, you don't need anymore now for the nuclear um, staining. You could recover it to actually use it for a structure you're really interested in. Um, yeah. Then segment AI, I think the title already says it quite nicely. It does a segmentation. So this, as you can imagine, is a quite typical but very difficult um, example of um, these uh, like um, neural cells here and you want to have these traces. And um, this often actually needs um, a ground truth data where the segmented is actually done with a lot of manual work. But the nice thing is that you do it once and then you reuse it. So this is um, a big advantage as well for mixed populations like you see here, which maybe come from um, primary um, uh, cell lines even. Um, you don't have to need any other images than the bright field, and you can get um, the numbers of these smaller cells here easily, which would be very difficult, if not impossible, for any other segmentation. Um, all these tools can be, of course, nicely integrated in the workflow of our software. So for the people who already know it, you might be familiar with these jobs protocols, um, where we enable you to do non-orthogonal experiments without the need for programming skills. And of course, you can then as well start that your um, that your microscope can take decisions, like not only yes and no decisions, but maybe a little bit more difficult. Um, we were talking about this yesterday, but the workflow is uh, very, very easy. And um, you can scan your sample, you can use your network, you can identify the cells you're actually interested in, and then you can continue with a more targeted acquisition. So you as well don't uh, avoid a lot of junk data. Um, and the analysis would be just one tap in your um, protocol. And when you have a closer look at this, um, you can do all sorts of things there, including the artificial intelligence algorithms. And um, it's as well drag and drop, you don't need to program. So I think with this, we really give you all tools or hand um, that you smoothly can integrate this uh, in your workflow. And with this, I'm happy to answer maybe questions at this point. Jordi, Sylvia? I'm here. I'm here um, before we start the live presentation of the Enhanced. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can I hear you. I had some trouble. I had to exchange my, my browser. I don't know why Firefox didn't work well. And I had a little bit of trouble. But now I'm back, finally. I hope. Very good. I hope, I hope <laughs> you can see me also. I'm here. Ah, no, I think uh, you can yes. see me. I hope that everyone can see me now. I stopped sharing. That's fine. That's fine. I'll try now to share. So let me first uh, apologize for the trouble I had. 
as I told you, I had to exchange my browser. I had some trouble with Firefox, and I had to exchange it uh, to to Google Chrome. I hope that uh, my conversation with the organizers didn't interrupt you so too much in your presentation, Simone. I'm really sorry for that. No, 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 don't worry. Do you want, uh, I don't know if there, there are some questions, or you want to go uh, straight into the demonstration? Up to you, to be honest, I could not uh, see the chat now, just that I stopped sharing again. Um, I can see it, I can have a look. Yes. I see no sound. I hope this um, solved again. I think, Jordi, you can start uh, doing the, the demo and maybe... Uh, we can, uh, we can do be... the demonstration exactly I and then so, we, yeah. can, we can uh, go for the questions. Perfect. Thanks, Sylvie. So let's, let me share the screen. I hope I can do it well. Let me check that. I have to add here, this is a browser that I, I don't know very well, so I'll have to, I understand that I have to share. So you probably now see, I don't know if you can see now that our nice elements, uh, our nice elements um, uh, software. Can you see it now? On your screen? Yes. Yeah, you, we can, can you see, see nice Yes, elements? yes. Can you see me also from the video, from the, vi the video yes. camera I have? <laughs> also, well, your camera is on. So, let's let's first uh, show a little bit the system I have in here. I'm using my my headphone, so I hope that uh, well, I'm going to move that very smoothly so that you can see what we what we have in here. We have here our, our microscope, our demonstration microscope. It's a TI2E, the inverted microscope, and in this case, since uh, we've decided to add. A Nikon camera, a Nikon monochrome camera, which is a DSQI2. So I have my camera on the left port of the microscope. So here I am. So we are left now. I hope that you can now see me. I cannot. I don't know if you can see me at this moment. I'm going to turn the, my, the lights off of the of the room where I am. Just a second. Well, I, I hope you can you can see me. I hope you can see me. Now I'm going to move the, the video the video cam so that I think you'll be able to see the microscope. Can you can we see the microscope now, Sylvia? Yes, Jordi, we can see it. Well, anyway, let's start. Let's start. So that's what I've prepared. I'm going to show first the the sample we have. We're going to show you. Uh, a, a very simple sample, uh, one of those samples that we use for for demonstrations. So here we have our microscope. This is the acquisition control we have, and our in our sample we have the three typical colors that uh, can be found on those molecular probe samples. So I'm going to first of all look at uh, the DAPI nuclei. You can see you can see it here. I hope that the image is good. So this is the typical image, and we are going to work with this nucleus. So this is the typical uh, Fitzy image, the green, and this is highway 3. So I hope you can see it. So this is a typical sample, but we are going to work on the nucleus, on the DAPI nucleus. So you'll see here that the camera, the DSQI2, has a quite a large dynamic range. We're working at 14 bits, so 16,000 gray levels. And in this image, we are working up to more or less 9,000 gray levels. So basically what we are going to do, we are going to simulate uh, an experiment with very low light. So you can see this is a quite well exposed image. We are working at 50 milliseconds exposure time. The gain, we are not using gain to have the better image quality possible. And we are working at one times uh, analog gain. And for this experiment, I've set the system up with a P4000 at 18% uh, for the 385 nanometer LED. So that's a condition, a good condition for this sample. But we can try to simulate a very low condition sample. Uh, just by clicking the dot below, we can see here that we have decreased the amount of light that is reaching the sample. It's just 4% at this moment. As you can see, we compare it with the other one, which is 18%, so we can save a lot of light. But the main difference is the exposure time. The exposure time has changed from 50 milliseconds to 
500 microseconds. So the difference in exposure time from the two images, DAPI low and DAPI, will be around 100 times. Bear in mind as well that we are going to use only a part of the light that we used in the, in the, in the normal exposure time, in the normal, let's say, catch. So I'm going to very briefly show how, what I did this morning. This morning, I set up an ND acquisition. <coughs> Sorry. And in this uh, uh, ND acquisition, I simply added these two optical configurations, what we call the configurations, DAPI and DAPI low. I click in the two for several X, Y positions which are these positions that we have in here. I think I did it for 15 positions. And you can see here the difference between the two images. The one that is well exposed is on the left. And the one that is not so well exposed is on the right. So you can see that on the right we have a very low signal to noise ratio image. And on the left we have a well exposed image. We can, we can compare the two just by clicking this icon and you'll see that all these images you can see on the left uh, the correct uh, exposed image on the right the not so correct exposed image like just to simulate uh, uh, difficult conditions if we want to uh, to uh, score to, to save our experiment and these conditions so the challenge will be to transform this kind of images in a image similar to this one by using uh, uh, artificial intelligence, what we call enhanced AI. So what I did, and I did it this morning, very quickly, I'll show it to you so, so that you can see that uh, the, it is really easy to use the, the artificial intelligence attachment. So here we have an ND file, the files that we get with, with, our, uh, with our software. And I simply have to go into the Explorer at create new analysis explorer and I have to say train the, the we have we have here three different uh, possibilities in this case is trains enhance AI and a very simple window appears and I say which is the source channel the sun the channel I'm going to use as a source and which is my ground truth channel in this case the source channel is the that below the one that I have uh, taken this morning at very low exposure time with the low signal to noise ratio and which is the real channel let's say the ground truth channel which is the DAPI. We can simply add the number of iterations that we will that we will, uh, we will we want to do it and where we want to uh, where we want to uh, uh, store our EAI solver which is our network solver in this case I'm going to do it in, in the next slide. You simply have to say to say train. As you can see now, the system is 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 is, is starting. So the system will perform. We should perform one thousand iterations on that. But we will we will finish that because we are, I'm going to use the one I've just done this morning. So you can see here the training loss. The training loss, if it's below let's say 5%, something like this, below 0 0.05, we can consider that it's good. So here we have an indication if our, uh, uh, if our network will be fine enough. As you can see, the, the curve is going down and down and down. Uh, in theory, the, the nice element AI experiment would take around six hours or five hours, something like this. We've just uh, uh, been uh, doing that for one minute. And I'm going to stop it now and I'm going to show you a little bit the result I got this morning in the sense of the training loss that uh, I, I, I got this morning. So I'm going to finish that. I'm going to finish. I'm going to move to the desktop and you can see that in the desktop I get two images. The first image is our neural network, the one I've just created, which is not correct, of course. And the training loss I, I, I got when I finished. Uh, my my uh, my training, but what I did this morning is this one, and here we have the file I'm going to use, and this is the training loss I got this morning. As you can see, there is a exponential curve, and I decided to stop it at uh, although uh, I should have done it perfectly. If I had done it perfectly, it would have taken a, a little bit more time, three plus 
uh, almost four hours more, I decided to finish uh, at, uh, after 53 minutes, as you can see here. Right? But you can see that the training loss is below 5%. So I expect that the images we can reconstruct from the, 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 the low, let's say from the, the, the low signal to noise ratio images are fine. So this is the, the image, uh, the, the ND I used to, to create my neural network, only 15 images. I took my ground truth image and my, let's say, uh, uh, the, the kind of images I'm going to use for uh, uh, network. So now I'm going to make the experiment, the real experiment. To do that, I'm going to move to the Lambda. I'm going to take images only at the uh, low exposure time, so the, at low real uh, signal to noise ratio. Here I, here I am. And I'm going to start uh, my uh, live experiment. So here I am. You can see here, I hope it, it can be seen well. So here we have our very low signal to noise ratio image. So here it is. Uh, you can see we are uh, live now. Uh, I can move my stage. And I'm going to take five, six, seven images so that uh, we can try to reconstruct these images by uh, simply by using uh, artificial intelligence. This will be my first point. I'm going to, to move to another one. Let's say this this can be a good point as well. I understand this, this will be a good point as well. Let's move to another one. Let's move a little bit further. This will be my third point. Let's move up. This can be my fourth point. Let's do it. This could be my fifth point, for example. And my sixth, I'm, I'm going to do it with seven points. Just a number, can be any point. So this way. So I have now seven points. And I'm going to reconstruct my let's say, ground truth image by using artificial intelligence, simply by using, uh, well, I'm going to run now. So the system is going to take the seven images. So here, here they are. As you can see here, let's look at the dynamic range of these images. As you can see here, the dynamic range is really uh, small. Uh, I'm going to move approximately from 380 to 460, so less than 100 grid levels. So it's really, really, really uh, 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 a bad, let's say, a bad uh, signal to noise ratio, something like this. And now I'm going to go to nice AI, enhance. I'm going to use my W channel, and I'm going to simply click on OK. And in about some seconds, we will get the result. No. See here we have the result. This is my artificial intelligence image, and this is my low signal to noise image. As you can see, there is a lot of difference. We can see that in the in full screen. I'm going to decrease that image a little bit so that I can. Sorry. I can move the W-low image here and we can compare the two. So here we have the two. As you can see here, in my, for example, in my first image, my dynamic range is really low, only 100 grade levels, and it has been expanded a lot, quite a lot, in the artificial intelligence image. So I hope that you can see here, this is the, the reality of my image. Mm -hmm. This is my DAPI low and this is my DAPI AI. Sorry, I made a mistake. So this is my artificial intelligence image and this is my signal, my low signal to noise uh, ratio image. Let's compare the two. Now here we have the two. 
And as you can see here, I don't know if, I hope it works. You can see here the, the profile. You can see the, a very nice signals, signal to noise ratio here with my artificial intelligence reconstructed image and not so nice signal to noise ratio. You can, you can hardly see below, you can hardly see the profile of my, let's say, uh, seen low signal to noise ratio image. Let's let's see the other images. So here we have. Now I'm using I, I'm using the LUTs, but in reality that image is not so good. Is because the the LUTs. I'm going to use that. So I hope that you can see a little bit the difference between the two. This is the AI, the AI, and this is the signal, the low signal to noise ratio. Let's move. As you can see, we've been able to reconstruct from our low signal to noise ratio the artificial, uh, more or less, a, a very similar image to our ground truth. I hope that this demonstration that you could see the difference between the two images. Sometimes in the distance is difficult. Simone, what do you think? I think it's very nice, Jordi. Thanks a lot. I'm really <laughs> sorry for the mess, but no, I no, hope that. Worry. I hope that you can see really the difference between the, these two images. I don't know if the distance this can be seen. You I can, can see, see here. Well. You can see here the profile, yeah. which is very nice. In this case, in this case, we are using. We have almost ten thousand gray levels, but in the first image we always will have one hundred page levels. So we could use now this artificial intelligence image to uh, to uh, count this nucleus or to make, for example, a tracking experiment. But the advantage would be that we would use, instead of using 50 milliseconds, as I told you here, instead of using 50 milliseconds and 80% power of, uh, of my uh, for 385 LED, we would simply use 500 microseconds and 4% of my LED. So I think that this is quite a powerful tool in order to uh, to design our experiments, and we get very nice results. You can see you can see here the difference. So I'm going to finish now my experiment. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we can now uh, start with our questions. I'm going to and share my screen. I'm going to turn the lights Maybe on. Shall I start with the questions in the chat? You, or you collected the... I'm back. So I don't know if there are some questions in the chat, Sylvia? Sylvia, you're still muted. I yes, I, 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 there are some, some, uh, some questions here. So if it's uh, okay, I would start uh, with these. Yeah, okay, with the I first one so. from the Alexander so. Hego. Yeah. Hi. yeah. <laughs> so, go ahead, please. So, go ahead. Um, the first question, I read it just to make sure everybody's aware what I'm answering. The first questions, there are several questions, um, is if we can perform the AI on all microscope files. Um, no. Um, the proprietary microscope files from other companies, we cannot directly take. Um, this, um, I think, makes as well sense. But if you provide any other file format, which like TIFF, uh, you can, of course, use it. And um, we already successfully actually did it, and we steered a non-Nikon microscope uh, using Enhanced AI for a live cell experiment. But of course, um, this is like you're then a little bit left on your own. So it's in nice elements, so it's in our proprietary software. The easiest handling is, of course, with our own data sets. Um, the input and output files have to come together. But this is very easy as well to do with a TIFF. So then you just have to prepare your TIFF files in a way that input and output 
are in one file. And then you can open it in nice elements and perform your um, training. Um, then the second question is, um, do you have algorithms as noise to void? Um, we cannot integrate uh, freeware in our software and we don't want to. So noise to void um, is uh, freely available and um, all the neural networks we uh, use are Nikon neural networks. So um, we actually don't want you to program your own network. If you can program your own network, which is of course possible, then you kind of don't have to use our software. Like it's really designed that you don't have to get into programming your own network. Um, yeah, the training time, this is a very um, common question. Jordi, maybe uh, you can talk from experience. Uh, I um, I think you did a lot of the training this morning, right? I did, I did. Well, Did you uh, wake up at 5 in the morning to do it? No, 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 I did it at 9, at 9. At 9 o'clock, okay. or 10, or 10 o'clock, something like this. <laughs> well, uh, I, uh, there, there is not a definite question about how much time you need for, for the training. It will depend on the sample, the complexity, it depends on many things. Yeah. In a sample, a simple sample like the one we've shown, which was the correct sample for a very fast demonstration, it may be just an hour. It depends, it depends. The, 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 the question is that uh, the, the sample you, you have to work with has to be representative of your whole population. That's, that's the, the tricky question. That's a tricky question. So the, the, the advantage of, the, 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 of, our, of our software is that if you perform, you, if you create your own uh, network and, it, and you make some experiments and it, you see that it doesn't work very well, you can add some more images in the end. So we cannot tell you a definite answer. It will depend on your experiment. The, the most important thing is that uh, you, you, the, the, the sample you get is, is really representative of the whole population you're going to study. If you do that, uh, the network will work fine, basically. For example, in, in, the, in the file, I, in, in the ne 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 neural network I've just prepared, in theory, with an hour, it's enough. If your training loss is less than 5%, you can be quite sure that it will it will work more or less fine, but if you have a training loss of two percent, it'll be better that you have a training loss of five percent. But below five percent, you can be quite sure that it will work fine. It'll work and fine. maybe one thing you add is, of course, um, that it as well depends on your hardware you have. Um, but we are um, compatibly fast, so we are. I mean, from the side by side um, tests I had, we were normally always very fast in performance. Um, but as I said as well, the um, infrastructure you have available matters a little bit, but um, Jordi just used one of our normal PCs as well, am I right? Exactly. Uh, I've used With a Z4. RTX 4000. I've used yeah. a standard uh, Z4 from HP and the standard, well, I used the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 4000, yeah. which is the, a relatively cheap uh, video yeah. card to do that. But you can use a better and fast uh, uh, video video cards like the RTX uh, 6000 or 8000. I think that a good workstation to do a, to do nice elements AI would be could cost maybe five, six, seven thousand euros, which is a, a cost that I think it's affordable now for a Microsoft facility. Yeah. It's it's not. But even like not, you said, already the RTX 4000, which is way uh, less expensive, will already be nice um, performing. Exactly. If I if, um, I if I had to do something really uh, really difficult, I would do I would do the the, the training. Uh, I I would I would leave the training uh, at six o'clock in the evening, and the uh, following day in the morning it would it would have been done. Yeah. So we don't have to worry too much about that. I yeah. think I think. And the last question um, is about the data augmentation. Um, no, we don't. You cannot uh, create data with a nice elements. Um, uh, nice Elements is not uh, shaped for making artificial data um, because, I mean, we are in, like, people should record the data with the image. We see that, of course, this can make your network, um, uh, like, less prone to um, uh, overtraining, um, but you would need to provide this within your data set, um, which you've um, put in, and the um, augmented data would need to come from some other source. Uh, mm. Here we have a question about the HPZ840, 840, 840. 
I think that the speed will depend not um, on the on the workstation but on the on the graphic card. So yes. you should have you should add in your HP Z840. You should add a good graphic card like uh, yeah, the RTX uh, for, uh, RTX uh, 4500 5000 series. So I think yeah. you agree with me. Yes, it only depends uh, on your graphic card. Maybe one thing I can add, um, Ampera design, so the latest NVIDIA um, architecture will only be supported, um, let's say, after the first quarter of next year from us. So if you are now very keen on the latest graphic cards and you get the latest Empyrean structure from NVIDIA, um, you still have to wait a little bit. But we're like constantly adapting to the latest graphic cards, but the gaming market is so fast um, that they are thrown on us in a very, very, very high speed. So maybe for this, double check uh, with your Nikon staff um, which graphic card to use. So uh, most of the questions that uh, we uh, that have been asked are the ones that I had asked you. So that I think that uh, that is interesting. Let me check if there's something else. Uh, Alexandra uh, is very unhappy that you cannot talk. It would be nice to talk to you directly. Uh, <laughs> so have we, have, nice uh, we have some uh, a new question on the chat from uh, Peter. From Peter, mm -hmm. from Peter. Yeah. Are there different training modes, for example, unsupervised self-learning or just sample to out output modes? Um, so we don't have unsupervised learning. It's all supervised learning um, due to this region that we really think um, you have enough um, data from our microscopes and you should use them for the um, as training material. Um, I'm not sure about the second part. So it, yes, you always have a sample input and some output modality. I'm not sure. Maybe Peter, you can write a bit more detailed. Sorry that you have to type, but um, yeah. So the output you will always have some image then from your microscope, which will then be um, either converted um, or directly segmented, or as we saw, um, enhanced. Um, but I'm not sure what other modality your. Um, yes, un so unsupervised learning. Um, of course, is, uh, we are monitoring this as well, but I think it's where we need to gain more trust. And I think if you know that your the input data comes from you and you know how it's learning, um, and as we've shown, it's not very uh, a lot of work. Like um, from my experience, I can tell you, I would have been so happy for Segment AI. I mean, I clicked weeks and weeks and weeks of always the same data like um, click, 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 click. And you would do this once. And even if they would have told me I would need to do it for a week, I would have done it as a PhD, you know? It's like, um, yeah. But so maybe in the future, we will have some unsupervised learning as well. Hmm. Let me just add one final question. Uh, and I think it's quite an interesting one. If we can combine this uh, artificial intelligence with other tools in our software, like jobs uh, to or or, or uh, general analysis or this kind of stuff. Yeah. So as I said, so within Nice Elements, it's um, in a like smooth workflow. Um, like Alexander asked before, we kind of allow you to take it back and forth into and out of Nice Elements. But if you stay within Nice Elements, um, you can have your jobs experiments with your different tasks in one of these tasks can be general analyzers, and then general analyzers will have the artificial intelligence. So I don't think there is a, there are, I don't think there are more questions. So I think we've done our job today. And we right. could, You've we done could, the job today, Jordi. No, we did it, we, 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 we all did it, we all did it. <laughs> so that's, that's fine, I think we can, we can finish. And I hope to see you tomorrow. I will see you. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll re just uh, remind that uh, we will have this very same session tomorrow. If you liked it, just tell the other guys in your research lab or other people that you know that it can be of interest for them. And I think to this evening we have also a very interesting uh, topic, uh, Sylvia. Uh, today at four, we are going to have a very nice lecture from a very old instrument uh, talking about the, the, the newest uh, release from Super Resolution. Then I invite all of you to join us. Thanks, thanks, Simone. Thanks, thank you very much. Thanks, Jordi. Thanks, Sylvia. Thanks, all Bye. the listeners. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>